In this video, we're going to look at creating a data definition language trigger or DDL trigger. The concept is simple. We want to be sure that no table can be dropped from the database easily. So we're going to create a trigger that prevents table drops. And if we want to actually drop or delete a table from the database, we'll have to make sure we first disable the no table drops trigger, and then we can drop or delete a table afterwards re-enabling the trigger giving us the protection again. So the code begins with the create trigger statement just like our DML trigger does. In this case it is named no table drops. It is on the database and not on a table because we're protecting against a table drop so we can't really check in the table for it as it may be the object being dropped. So we're checking on the database for drop table as and then we're just going to give them a message. You cannot delete an entire table to delete an entire table, the no table drops trigger must first be disabled. And then we simply roll back the transaction. That's all we have to do. We really don't need a logical construct here because we're protecting against table deletion. We know we don't want it to happen, and therefore we can just roll back any time a request is made, even by someone with the permissions to do so. So let's first of all create our trigger by highlighting this code and choosing execute. It says that the command completed successfully, so we should be able to go to the database level, programmability, and then our database triggers. We'll right click, choose refresh, and here we see the no table drops trigger. Like the DML trigger that we saw in another video, we can do several things with it, including the fact that we can disable and enable the trigger here, and we can also script the trigger if we want to. Now let's go ahead and delete the table. So we'll say drop table, DBO customers, and what happens is, once again, we get the fact that the transaction ended in the trigger, the batch has been aborted, and it says you cannot delete an entire table. So we're getting the message that we intend to get when this occurs. Now, at this point in time, I can simply highlight the drop trigger statement and remove that trigger. Now, that completely removes the trigger as opposed to disabling the trigger. And if I right-click on database triggers now and choose refresh, you will see that there are no triggers. It's no longer expandable, meaning that there are no triggers in the database triggers container. So as you can see, triggers are very easy to create and give you a lot of extra protection in the right scenario. And these are just a couple of example scenarios, the DML trigger we've created in an exercise and in the video, and the DDL trigger that we've created in an exercise and in the video.